Uh, good evening, thank you for attending tonight's Audit and Governance Committee, 28th of July, 2021. Um, just so that you're aware, we're not live tonight, but we are being recorded for posterity and uh, put on YouTube at some point this week. Um, which brings us, us on to uh, agenda item uh, number one, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, I obviously had to kind of vouch for them. Uh, we couldn't have a second of all uh, the, the first uh, set of minutes for this committee, but um, um, obviously we we had a full house at the last one, so if somebody would like to move them, Councillor Chesworth moving them seconder, Councillor People, thank you. And we're all in favour of signing those. Yeah, that's fine. I'll sign those off then. Okay. Apologies for absence. Well, we've got apologies in from Councillor Ford and Councillor Cooper. Um, and, and Lynn can't be with us tonight, can she? So, um, I just wanted to introduce um, Andrew Wood, uh, new audit manager. I don't know whether you want to say hello and uh, introduce yourself. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, my name's Andrew Wood. I started as audit manager middle of June, um, coming from a previous consortium up in North North Derbyshire. So I've, I've got 20 years plus local government experience, plus also 10 years in the not-for-profit and also the private sectors as well. So hopefully I can bring a lot of um, experience to both the committee and also to internal audit across the shared service with Litchfield as well. Thank you, Andrew. It's good to have you on board. And uh, we've also got tonight attending, we've got uh, Will Guest with us from Grant Thornton. There, hi, Will. Hello, um, my name's Will Guest. I'm an audit manager for the external audit of Tamworth Borough Council. I've been working in public sector for seven, nearly eight years now. Um, and yeah, look forward to working with you longer. Thank you very much. Um, item three, declarations of interest. Any? Nope. Okay, great. Um, Stefan, we're going to deal with four and five together, you think, then? Because, um, well, um, long story short, we, we, we have to defer um, the audit findings report. As you see, it was distributed as an audit progress report uh, because the audit's not complete yet. And, of course, the management representation letter follows on from that. So um, I don't know whether you want to just give a bit of background, Stefan, on, on it. On the audit findings report, I'll pass over to Will. But a bit of background um, to, well, for Will to explain sort of the, the delay in the audit completion. But the the audit findings report uh, isn't available because of the audit being delayed, uh, and the management representation letter. Um, I was going to bring it to the committee to sign off, but the auditors, uh, the external auditors, would prefer us to wait before we sign that off until. Uh, close to the sign-off date for the accounts, which will be later in August or early September. Um, but we'll, we'll cover that as part of the agenda, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I mean, we'll come to, I think, dates. The idea was to... Uh, we, we will go further into this in a moment. We'll just... just um, we, we had some dates circulated that would probably be appropriate for another meeting or to bring the meeting in September forward to deal with this. Um, so cancel the September meeting, have it earlier, uh, either end of August or beginning of September. But um, I think we, we don't need to bog down in dates for that. At this point, we could do a committee timetable if we're all happy um, to do that. We'll just deal with the um, the recommendations to defer after we've heard why. So if you, if you over to you, Will. Thank you, Chair. So in the audit progress part, I'd like to pull you to page four. On page four, this sets out that in March we delivered our detailed audit plan and that set out that we were going to begin our audit in June and we did begin our audit in June. However, due to unforeseen circumstances with some illness of our in charge, we've had to delay the audit slightly. The audit hasn't progressed quite as much as we would have liked it to. So we were aiming for an end of July sign-off. However, that is now looking like an August sign-off. The audit findings report is likely to be issued next Friday, which will be the 6th of August, but that is pending the completion of our work and the items that are still ongoing. The big item that is detailed on page 4, I suppose, that is outstanding are the valuers' assumptions for land and buildings on their valuations and also council dwellings. 
we have been having regular contact with the valuer and that is ongoing and I don't think that is an issue as such it's just that we're still working through that and that is a big chunk of our work the other area that I'd like to draw your attention to is the pension fund auditors letter now the pension fund auditor does a lot of testing around the data that is submitted by the council to the pension fund and then how that is then transferred into your report which says what your assets and what your liabilities are for the pension now the pension fund auditor have told us that we won't get that letter until the end of august which is likely to be the 31st of august and what that means is we can't sign off your accounts until that date now i know that's not ideal but we're a little bit bound by that letter i'm afraid because it gives us assurance over a large liability in your financial statements so as i said the audit findings report we're hoping for the 6th of august for that to be finalized in terms of value for money, so the, the initial deadline that we communicated in March for this was the end of September. However, the National Audit Office have allowed for a uh, deferral, if you like, for three months after the date that the opinion is signed. So if we move on to page five, that will set out the new deadlines that we are working to. So the audit findings report, you can see that, that was planned for July 2021, but it will be completed in August 2021. The auditor's report, which is the opinion on the financial statements, also was due for July 2021, but will be completed in August 2021. And the auditor's annual report, which is our report on your value for money, was due for September 2021, but that is now deferred to November 2021, which is three months after the date of the opinion. After this, there's just a sector update, which goes through various slides of things that have changed over the past few months. I think the one that is probably most appropriate for the committee and some of them probably be interested in is on page 13 which is around public interest reports and that just details around the sort of increased amount recently of public interest reports that have been issued for other councils and some reasons why that is thank you thank you very much have has anyone any questions councillor people thank you chair <coughs> in the light of what we've heard should we therefore tonight is the proposal that we agree to defer these items to the revised timetable is that the proposal then in front of us uh, yes effectively defer to the next meeting but we won't get bogged down in meeting dates at this point we'll do it committee no, timetable I was, if we're happy yeah. I was quite happy with that bit yeah, I, yeah. I, I just meant I presume under this heading we'll simply say that the matters were deferred yes I, I have to say that I think in the light of one of the meetings I was at, at some time back now at the um, combined authority where one of the authorities was talking about the revaluation of buildings in their area and and how difficult that had been because of changing demand usage and everything else um, I would have thought it's extremely pertinent to you know have time to get the best possible judgments rather than you know stick to a timetable that isn't necessarily <laughs> in our best interest so I, I, I I concur with what you're proposing, Chair. I'll happily move or second, whichever you wish. Um, yeah, um, if, if you want to propose it, I'll second the uh, the, the motion to uh, to defer to the next meeting, item four and five. Uh, for all in favour of that, um, thank you. Right, thanks. <coughs> Um, which brings us to item six then, which is the annual statement of accounts and report 2020-21. So again, there's a little bit of a knock-on effect as well, which we'll have to discuss. But, uh, over to you, Stefan. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up uh, at the end of my briefing on the, the statement of accounts. So, um, as members are aware, preparation of the, the accounts is the culmination of work, of months of work by the finance team, which started with initial planning meetings with the auditors back in February. We have a, an audit planning workshop with them, which goes through the main issues uh, to look for as part of the, the accounts closed down. We've had monthly update meetings uh, since then uh, with the audit team uh, and uh, Mark Stocks, uh, the, the audit lead. Uh, and more recently, weekly meetings with Will and the team on the delivery of the audit and the progress made. Obviously, Will's explained the situation with the, 
the, uh, the deferral and the unforeseen circumstances. Um, the hard work of the finance team in the preparation of the, the statement of accounts and associated notes meant we did produce the draft accounts uh, by the end of May, which was our target, approved by this committee. Um, we, uh, we circulated the initial draft to this committee and the auditors on the 1st of June, following a period of quality assurance and due diligence checks. And then I signed them off and we, we published them on the website officially and provided the, the final version to the external auditors on the 2nd of June. Uh, which was, you know, in light of the the, the situation that sort of we're facing, you know, staffing reductions and um, vacancies, uh, and the additional demands of accounting for all of the grants and, and the and the account for the uh, the impact of COVID on uh, the council's accounts last year was quite an achievement. The audit commenced, as as Will said, from mid June. It's expected that it will be completed this week and then the audit findings report uh, issued hopefully next week. Um, it's previously been reported to members that because of the need to close down earlier, obviously the end of May is quite early um, uh, and, and has been brought forward in recent years, we have to rely on estimates um, and it's more likely that we will have changes to, that are required to the accounts because of that. Uh, and that is the case uh, again this year um, because there's been a material change of about two million pounds uh, since the actuary produced the estimated figures in April, which we closed the accounts down on, uh, and then we have a final report in June to, to confirm those figures, which changed by two million pounds, which which has reduced the net liability on the balance sheet from 52 million pounds to 50 million pounds. Uh, we've agreed a number of amendments with Will and the team um, as well that have been picked up as part of the audit. They're all included in the statement of accounts which is attached to the agenda item. It's important to note that other than the pension fund changes, uh, the adjustments are just presentational or disclosure issues. They've not changed the overall figures within the statements and haven't had any impact on general fund or HRA balances or the collection fund. Uh, moving on to the, the issues with the delay, the regulations do require that the chair of the committee formally sign the accounts and that usually represents sort of the, the, the conclusion of the, the accounts approval process. Uh, so while um, t Will and the team have concluded the vast majority of, of the work on the accounts, uh, you know, we've, we've, since mid-June we've been working with the team uh, and, and responding to their queries. As he said, that, that it's not yet complete, and also there are, there is the issue with the Staffordshire Pension Fund audit and waiting for their uh, assurance uh, at the end of August. So, at this stage, we're still recommending that the member that members uh, approve the statement of accounts, uh, but delegate authority to the chair of the committee to uh, approve any minor changes and then re-sign the accounts. Um, minor changes um, may arise from the, the, the rest of the work but we don't anticipate that there will be any major changes um, and, and if there are any major changes we'll then bring a report back to the September committee with the audit findings report and the updated accounts and advise members at that stage. Um, it's probably worth saying that um, the w once the uh, once the audit is complete and, and the chair can sign the accounts, um, that will be sort of the, the end of the the process. But the auditors, um, because of their uh, regulations, do have to come and present their audit finding reports to yourselves as as those charged with governance. So, if I can ask you to uh, approve the accounts tonight. Um, as we're not expecting any further changes, but delegate authority to the chair to sign them once the audit is complete and we've, we've got the audit findings report from the auditors. Finally, um, I'd like to, to thank Will, um, Mark and the team for their hard work. Uh, it's been difficult this year because of the, the, the resourcing issues and it's, you know, it, it is all but finished you know, by end of July, early August. 
and it do, members should be aware that the statutory deadline for approving the accounts is the 30th of September or auditing the accounts. So we, we have achieved that you know, a couple of months ahead of, of target. So happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you. Um, ju just so that, we, that you know that we, we do have a, a slightly revised recommendation as pretty much outlined. Um, I mean, I will read it out in full um, just so that we're aware of the wording. But of course, um, naturally, I wouldn't be comfortable with signing anything that wasn't that was materially different. <laughs> so you can have my assurance that wouldn't occur. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Councillor People. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, major and minor and materially different, mindful of the number of Yes Minister episodes in which it was explained that almost anything could be different but almost nothing could be expected to be materially different. Um, could we just have some assurance as to what level of change, you know what I mean, if, it, if it's, you know, it now is note six instead of note five, I mean, no, no one's going to query that. but. I, I'm really asking, I suppose, if there's a, an item that of a value, is there a sort of a, a number that changes things from minor to major? Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yes. Be, being the new boy on the committee, I'm bound to ask these daft questions. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, if if um, the auditors do pick up um, issues or, or uh, require or, or errors let's call them errors with with the numbers um, because of the the size of the council there is a materiality limit in place and as is something like 1.1 million pounds so the error has to be more than 1.1 million pounds to require us to actually change the accounts now it, it's not it, it, that is a a rule but for example if if something arose that was approaching a million pounds uh, you know we'd have the discussion with the auditors and we'd come to some agreement whereby if it was that material then we pro probably would agree to change the accounts anyway and at that point we'd be I'd be recommended to to Martin not to sign them and we'll bring the accounts back to the committee to reapprove so should we say about roughly about a million pounds but technically our, our materiality limit is 1.1 million pounds so anything below that technically we, sh we shouldn't have to change the accounts for thank you chair thank you um yes i was, I was going to say um in any case uh, it would be prudent if we could have a, a highlight of any particular material changes if there were any uh distributed amongst the committee before i did sign them off um i mean we did this last year anyway i signed them and had delegated responsibility to do it afterwards with the pension fund i think it was as well wasn't it so um so yes it, it, we have precedent for this but yeah i think you know just just for the committee's comfort if we have them distributed cha changes distributed before i do sign them off that if everybody's happy with that so yeah. you've got a question council yeah thank you i, I was just going to say um that uh i'm i'm just a little concerned this year particularly with the amount of grants that we received and monies that we had to pay out under those different headings that it's not so much that it's wrong <laughs> you know what I mean but rather that there might be some view as to the amount of clawback that might be liable because it can't be audited you know ultimately yet or we're not sure whether the government is going to require clawback on particular grants you know so it's that kind of thing that i was talking about and i'm more than happy uh the approach you're suggesting of um you know coming back saying well these are the proposed changes which will make the accounts look more exact um and, and i'm recommending to committee that i sign them and we'd no doubt come back to you in a constructive way, <laughs> you know. I mean, it, that that's that's a sensible approach. I haven't I haven't got. I'd happily second the proposal if you're proposing that wording. Yes, yeah, sure. If I could just clarify, Chair, um, it's probably worth saying that um, before I ask you to to sign off the accounts, the audit would have to be complete, and we would have had the audit findings report. So once we've got that. You know, we can circulate that to the members of the committee, and you'd, you'll see all all of the issues that have been raised as part of the audit, 
and what we have changed if if it's material um so before you you can sign or you you'd be able to sign you'd um, you know all members would, would see that anyway Councillor Gretrix have you ever had a um an example in the time that you've been in your job where there has been as you put it a major change having to be made to the accounts i.e. in excess of one point something million yes um it was it was probably probably 15 20 years ago um and I won't go into too much detail, but um, the, the way we account for our housing stock is based on a uh, a social housing value percentage reduction, and and that changed between the years, and we, we hadn't changed it, so that was picked up as part of the audit, and then we had to change the numbers in the accounts. But they, I mean that that's the, the 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 only one I can think of that is of a material nature, which was picked up as part of the audit. Obviously, the pension fund changes are outside of the audit because you know that just you know we, we get the original report and then we get the revised report and then we have to change if if it's material anyway this might seem a silly question but i'm very new to this committee as well um houses seem to have accrued in value quite drastically over this pandemic is that taken into account when you're um, assessing the value of our council house stock. Yes, so our, our approach to, I mean, our council housing stock is our biggest asset on the balance sheet. You know, it's best part of two hundred million pounds worth of um, uh, of our balance sheet net cost or, or net net balance sheet position. Um, so we, our approach has been for a number of years now that we revalue um, on a desktop basis all of our housing stock every year. Now that's not officially required by SIT for guidance because you know you can spread out the revaluation, re but because it's such a material figure, we do a desktop review, or we, we actually employ an external valuer to do it, who does a desktop review of the whole housing stock um, on a yearly basis and then comes up with a new figure. And how he does it, he obviously looks at the market and, and uses his his knowledge and the market uh, position or the market evidence to substantiate his valuations, which then Will and the team, um, they go through in some, I mean, in, in quite a lot of detail, as well as the COVID grants, you've, you've gone through those in, in quite, a, quite a bit of detail this year as well. So, yeah, I mean, it, the audit, uh, of our accounts is very detailed let's put it that way thank you and just to point out there's no such thing as a stupid question as far as i'm concerned in this committee it's fine ask what you want um okay any more questions all right the uh, the recommendation then um and i'm just going to add on um about the changes is that members approve the annual statement of accounts 2021 delegate authority to the chair of the audit and governance committee to approve any changes and re-sign the accounts if necessary once we have received the audit findings report from grant thornton and assurance from staffordshire county council's external auditors in relation to the staffordshire pension fund and ha have a highlighted list of changes distributed to the committee before re-signing the accounts and just as a um We'll, we'll have to call it the John Faulkner, thank you. But um, thanks, Stefan and team, for their hard work and extend our thanks to, to Grant Thoughts and all so um, in preparing the accounts. So if we're happy with that wording. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you knew what they all were first. <laughs> That's fine, thank you. Uh, right, so if, uh, that's seconded by councillor people, moved by myself, and uh, if we're all in favour. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so happy to, to sign those. And I'm, you're very trustworthy. I know you won't land me in prison. <laughs> so, right. Well, it's obvious you're only going to be a million out. So, you know, that's well, okay, yeah. I can pay that back in instalments. It's fine. Um, right then. Um, so, over to item seven then, which is the risk management quarterly update. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, so this report is uh, what is the, the regular quarterly risk management update for the committee, and obviously this one is for quarter one of 2021-22. 20, um, it, it also includes the revised format of the, the reporting of our risks, uh, following the planned review that we uh, previously reported to the committee. And the new format reflects the, the, the organisational structure, or a better reflection of the organisational uh, structure, and is more concise to give a focus and clarity to the key areas of concern. It also introduces target risk positions, along with direct links, uh, di direct links to the corporate uh, strategy, strategic objectives of the Council. Uh, responsibility for each risk area is alloc allocated to an executive director and each control measure within that risk area is assigned to an assistant director. The top four to six causes, consequences and controls are included and these will change to reflect current circumstances and it is reviewed quarterly. Um, the report monitors the strategic risks and provides for key operational risks to be referenced for information as a note within the relevant risk area. Um, in addition to the, the new format of the Corporate Risk Register, the revised risk policy document is attached for appro approval uh, and, it, uh, and that also introduces a section on risk finance and de develops the section on risk appetite. It also aims to further embed the culture of risk management across the Council with plans in place for the next stage of the review to update all operational risk registers. Um, and it, the report also includes the recommendations from a recent audit of the risk process at the Council and details of plans in place to address the recommendations. Happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you. And it's a nice, fresh new look for the report. Uh, anybody for questions? Councillor People. Thank you, Chair. Two, two areas I wanted to ask about. Um, the first is on the risks around governance. Um, I've written to the three scrutiny chairs and the leader with regard to the way in which the reset and recovery uh, scrutiny has been amended from that which went through council and expressed my concern that we're lacking in the scrutiny function. Um, so I'd just like to raise that, make the committee aware that I've raised that as an issue with them. Um, because we, we started off with a, an agreement as to how reset and recovery was going to be scrutinised. And I've said that it's so far it's not being adhered to. Um, I did say to the leader that the 3-3 split wasn't the issue. Uh, my concern is that the meetings have been channelled through the leader, um, whereas it was supposed to be through myself and the scrutiny chair. Um, and therefore... If in effect, he is now co-chairing a scrutiny committee, which seems to me to be not what governance is supposed to be about, that you have a scrutiny committee co-chaired by the executive. Um, so I've raised that with him. Um, I'm still, unfortunately, after a week, waiting for a response, um, presumably because the scrutiny chairs are consulting with the leader. Um, so that that's where I'm at at the moment on that particular issue. But as governance was a... Uh, an area in the risk assessment. I thought it only right to tr make committee aware. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nothing to add on that way. Okay. Well, th thank you for making us aware um, on this. Um, obviously, committee receives assurance and will receive assurance on uh, such matters in any case. So they they will be. You know, we will be able to discuss them here in any. Um, Okay, uh, any any further questions from anybody on this? No? Okay. Right, recommendations. Yeah. Sorry. No, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, I'm um, in the revised uh, risk policy, I noticed that in one case, uh, John Wheatley's been crossed out, which makes sense because John obviously has left us. Um, some time ago, um, uh, but it's been replaced by Lynn. So my question really is, was John's name there even though he'd subsequently been promoted to head executive finance, or was it there in his role as executive director, in which case why is 
that not passing to the executive director who succeeded him. Do you see what I mean? In other words, as a sign-off, is it just a catch-up with an old document or is it that the level of sign-off authority has gone down from executive to assistant director? I've got nothing against Lynch. He's incredibly professional. I'm just asking the question as to why it appears to have gone between levels. Okay. So, yes. I, I mean, it, the 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 answer is it now uh, reflects the organisational structure. So bef before we, there was only John, as there was one executive director. Now there's three of us and the chief executive who make up the executive leadership team. When we d did the restructure th three years ago. Um, the responsibility for the development and update of, of these policies it, uh, now sits with the assistant directors, not the executive directors. Obviously, as executive directors, we still have a responsibility for our, you know, uh, each of our assistant directors and their work. But that's what we did when we did the restructure. You know, they they are now responsible uh, because of their level within the organisation for policy development. Thank you, Chair. That's answered my query. Okay, thanks. Any more for any more? Right. Okay, so the recommendations are then that the uh, committee endorses the revised corporate risk register, approves the revised risk policy document, and that we note the audit recommendations. I'm looking for somebody to propose that, Peter. Oh, Moira, you want to second it, Peter? Yeah, I'll try to get everybody in. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, if we're all in favour then? No? Oh, all, okay. Um, all against? <laughs> Chair, as I queried the position on the risk register, I didn't feel I could endorse it. But I'm quite happy that everyone else has and accepted my constructive comment as to future discussion. So I have no problem. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. So I had one against. Thank you. Right then, uh, moving on to, um, I think that's a bit of audit and governance history as well actually. <laughs> uh, item 8, uh, the Internal Audit Progress Report 21-22, quarter 1 that is, report to the Audit Manager, over to you for your first agenda item on our committee. Thank, Thank you me. Chair. Um, this is a regular report to the committee um, and it's the quarterly report on internal audit progress for quarter 1 up to the 30th of June 2021. Um, quarter one work has focused on completing annual reports and the annual governance statement and also supporting counter fraud checks on the coronavirus business grants during, during that quarter. Uh, one thing to note that I will highlight to committee is that the quarter one performance has seen 6% completion of the audit plan. Um, however, first quarters of the annual year are actually relatively slow and this was due to ongoing reports which obviously I've referred to obviously myself pick, taking up post mid, in the middle of June and also we've had limited resources coming over from Litchfield because we've had two members of staff actually move on um, within Litchfield so basically what I've done as part of my sort of remit was that I've reviewed the the audit plan and in conjunction with Litchfield District Council we've procured IT services for an IT auditor which I believe that the committee had raised questions around IT generally so that will provide 20 days of internal of IT audit service and also a general audit uh, auditor service as well again just to cover the shortfall in in days one of the things also to note is that due to the change in the role between myself and and the pre predecessor um, I'm also able to actually got time to actually do audits as well so I can pick up some I can pick up the shortfall as well within that so basically I anticipate anticipate that we will uh, continue to achieve our audit plan um, however I will keep that under review and obviously we I will report on a quarterly basis to this committee of, of our achievement of that um, and also highlight any concerns as I go through with with that um, within the report um, you'll note that I uh, can report there's no specific issues have been highlighted to myself and there's been no matters of fraud or irregularity uh, irregular, I'll try again irregularity have been reported either um, one of the things also to note is that we haven't had any consultancy or advice work during quarter of one which again is all, always a, a 
relative concern because obviously from our perspective we need to then whoever does the consultancy or advice work we need to make sure that they're not involved in any future audits in that area for because obviously they could have been within the control framework or providing advice around the control framework um, as um, committee are aware we do internal audit do follow up all high priority actions and those arising from no or limited assurance reviews as again I'd like to note to committee that um, you will note that the number of outstanding recommendations has slightly increased and it's plateaued um, from previous months where it's actually um, basically been reducing over time again I can I can put that down to myself obviously coming in in mid-June and what I've um, been asked to do by Chief Executive is to arrange meetings with all assistant directors, issue them with all their current outstanding audit recommendations, go through basically over Microsoft Teams, discuss those recommendations and then basically make sure that we get that trend to going down on a, on a declining curve rather than it plateauing. Um, the committee will also note that we have carried out two follow-up reviews um, which were undertaken and the f first one was on housing contracts and basically three high, recommend high priority recommendations were, had been fully implemented, four medium had been, been fully Im implemented and one recommendation had, had been superseded by changes in, in processes. The other uh, follow-up uh, was property contracts on disabled facilities ad adaptations and again three medium recommendations have been fully implemented. One high recommendation or high priority recommendation was still awaiting to be implemented and we'll keep that under review and follow, up, follow that up. Uh, however, due to changes in processes and procedures, seven of the original recommendations that were raised have now been superseded. Um, one of the things that I can state is that those two follow-ups have now moved basically from no or limited assurance, they've now been um, regraded to reasonable assurance, so they're, 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 again those are on an upward curve on, on that. Um, I'm more than happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for... Um, uh uh, your predecessor had, did have a clean sweep before you, you took post, so um, there was considerably more recommendations outstanding before that. So, uh, but uh, yeah, of course we under, we do understand. I think the committee would understand. Obviously, you need to post, and we wouldn't expect miracles in the first few months anyway. So, uh, is anybody any questions at all for Andrew, Councillor People? Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, just to to clarify my understanding. You said there'd been no consultancy involved. Do you mean consultancy within the audit department? Yes. What, what I mean is, effectively, internal audit haven't been asked to provide any consultancy or advice work to, to within the council during that during the period. Sorry, Chair. So, actually, what you're saying is that no one in the council has asked you for assistance. Is, it, is that, it, that as opposed to where you go out and, and, and audit someone and say, I think you need to check up on how you do this. This is where they come to you and say, we've got a problem. Could you? And they, they've basically taken the view that you're new and you'll have a lot to do and uh, they don't want to burden you. Um, by the way, welcome. I meant to say welcome to, to, the, to Frey. I mean, it's obviously a very important role when you're... Um, procedured uh, by the chief exec covering for the audit manager at the last meeting um, so, <laughs> so so that was may I ask another question then chair uh, yes if you want to come back on the first points no, uh, e effectively councillor yes it, it is if people within the council ask us for advice around systems etc and whether they want us to be on project boards for example and things like that rather than going out and doing internal audit work specific work as detailed within the audit plan thank you chair um with regard to that then what is the role of internal audit within the reset and renewal process because there's seven streams and i'm just thinking would would it have it, has anyone yet discussed what involvement there'll be for your role in that uh, very large?
process? Yeah, no one has actually to date actually asked me about that. But again, what I can do is obviously review, re basically review that and go back to Andrew and basically highlight anything that of concern within within the reco recover and reset program. Um, but to date, no one has actually come back to myself as as audit manager to ask for any opinion or anything on that. Yes. Um, it is on the audit plan, though, isn't it? I think so. Just uh, as long uh, as well as future high street fund. Um, I've just clicked through the audit plan. I'm, I'm sure it is on there. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So recovery and reset is on the audit plan. So there will be an audit later in the year. Thank you. I, I'm just concerned with it being so big and so cross departmental that that. An absence of internal audit would, would almost be a, a red flag for the external audit to have to look at it because it's bound to be complicated. Um, the the thing that's come to my attention, or one of the things that's come to my attention, is that uh, the consultants engaged on the Gungate project have now undertaken other bits of work, and I'm not at all clear that they are being asked to. Um, rebid, requote, whatever for that work and whilst they may well be very good um, I just worry that you know you take them on fairly quickly because you want them to do the gun gate work and then while they're doing the gun gate work you ask them to do the marmion house work and then because they're doing the marmion house work we ask them to do something else and what was you know, a reward of one contract has actually become a seam uh, of work and I, and I just just like to make sure that we keep track of how far these contracts expand without some checking of who else could be doing the work what well, you know as, as i say it's not um it's not because i think um there, there's something wrong with them all i'm saying is you take them on you know we wanted somebody quick who would help do the high street fund they appeared to have the credentials and the outcome suggests that they did a good job, but then they're doing Gungate, then they're doing Marmin House. And if, as I am, you're at a number of committees, you find the same firm being presented again um, and there's been no separate tendering or evaluation process. Um, and it struck me when I went to the combined authority meeting, um, the people who were doing some consultancy there one of the other members said, oh, they're the same ones doing our council's, you know, equivalent of High Street Fund. And you saw suddenly, say, um, hang on a minute, how many, how many of these people are, are actually actively looking? So that, that was my concern, Chair. Thank you for letting me raise it. Thank you, Stephen, if you want to come back on. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to say, um, we have to abide by the, the procurement regulations and financial guidance, which does require quotes or attended process for, for uh, all of our work um, or all the work we're contracting. Where, where there is a, a business case or a value for money case uh, in place um, that justifies the use of a, a consultant on a different project that they've already bid for, then that does have to come through me and I, ha I have to sign that off as a waiver to financial guidance. And also, s sometimes, um, well, in those cases, it will make sense because, for example, um, the, the consultant will already have a detailed knowledge of how the council works and of the issues. Uh, t take the Future High Street Fund one, for example, where of issues within Tamworth Town Centre because of the Gummelgate work. So there's, a, there's an efficiency there. Notwithstanding that, though, there is a cap on how much um, one firm can work for us, and over and over above that cap, we would then have to go out to tender or uh, some other form of competition. So, uh, just to give you a bit of reassurance, really. Okay. 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 That was very helpful, Chair. I think part, partly because to know how how it is actually dealt with. Um, my concern is that we were being given the Gungate update at the same time as High Street Fund was going in 
and there were bits of the Gungate update that didn't seem to take account of what was being built next door if you'd read the High Street Bun Bill. Um, and, I, and so I, I just worry a little bit that it's, it's, not ju it's not only expertise, it's familiarity. And I, and I would just like, I'm, I'm reassured to know there is a cap at a point where, you know, someone actually has to say, well, hang on a minute. This is how much work they're now doing for us. And therefore, we do need to revisit um, um, how, that mu how that work is being allocated. So I found that particularly helpful. Thank you, Chair. You, you want to come back? Yeah, I would, I would also like to reassure the committee that we have got procurement as well within the within the audit plan for this year as well. So again, we can pick up from from that side. Yeah, thanks. I think the key thing is there efficiencies and 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 not having to to put out to tender something else which could easily be picked up by a firm who's already familiar, um, but obviously within limitations of caps and so on. But I mean, it it just. Um, it seems prudent to myself to to do that rather than consistently go out for every last little piece of detailed work that you need to do. Um, is there, has anybody any other questions for Andrew on this item? No. Okay. Right. Okay. Our recommendation then uh, for item eight is simply that we endorse the report. Um, obviously, we we have had an opportunity to raise any concerns as well but um, I'm happy to move that any seconder uh, who hasn't yet uh, Councillor Chesworth um, all in favour thanks okay that's uh, item 8 moving us on to uh, the audit and governance committee timetable uh, well timetable is essentially what it is but um, obviously we've alluded to the fact we need to um, to move forward the meeting for, from September um, we also need to fit in some training as well uh, which Andrew is arranging for us just to, to uh, assist new members of the committee especially um, I think Andrew you wanted to you, you'd, you'd put the 8th of September as an option for training but, and it was also an option for the meeting as well um, I mean I I'm erring on if the committee uh, wants to check the diaries um, the 8th for training and the 16th Thursday the 16th of September for the the audit meeting or is that a bit too late in the day I mean it's bringing it forward but not by much Ch yeah, sure. if, if I may um, the 16th is probably better for the audit committee just in case we do encounter any more delays especially with the pension fund auditor yeah. uh, that, that's what I was thinking it, it's um, it's bringing it forward not much but it probably just giving enough slack time as well just in case so um, I mean, if the committee's happy with that then we're, we're looking at uh, cancelling the the original September date for the audit and governance meeting um, and that we put that on the 16th of set Thursday 16th of September instead um, and indeed we're looking to bring forward some uh, agenda items um, to, to include on that as well and that will be put together in the background but uh, if the committee's happy with training on Wednesday the 8th of September then we can do that um, I only want to take a, a vote sorry Councillor Thurman Sorry Chair, I'm just looking at the diary and the 8th of September is to have the Dementia Friends um, training, I think it is in this chamber. Whether we can um, conduct the meeting at another in the old meeting room. Right, I think the training was due to be on Teams in any case, wasn't was it? it? But if it clashes with something yeah. else, yes, it um, was. Yeah. Should we come back on the training? The important thing is to arrange the meeting. Um, so I will vote. We'll vote on on uh, changing the date of the meeting just to tidy everything up. Um, so I propose we move the meeting uh, of audit and governance, the next audit and governance, to be the sixteenth of September. And looking for a second, a council third, good, yeah. Um, all those in favour? Okay, thank you. So that's the next meeting. And Andrew, if you if did you you, you put some of the dates, I think actually, hadn't you? Um, yeah, yes, chair. The, just trying to find. Sorry, the other, the other dates that I had were um, Tuesday 28th of September, Wednesday 29th of September, and then the next one was Wednesday the 13th of October. But you're right, Chair, it, it, it was go it, it's going to be via Teams. Okay. Uh, sorry, what was the earliest date of those that you read out? 
um, well, after after the 8th, the next one is the 28th of 28th. September. I, I think earlier the better, if the committee are happy with that, if we can pin down a date, 28th of September. Okay, I realise there's two of us not here, but... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's I've just realised that frees up the twenty second as well because we were due in twenty second or twenty eighth. <laughs> yeah, let's just. Uh, yeah, it depends on Andrew's availability. Yeah, I, I, looking at my diary, I've actually got audit committee on twenty second at Litchfield. Ah. So right, okay. I had a slight conflict. Oof. Oh, of course. You of already course. Uh, already ditched us on that day then. Sorry. Blimey. Sorry. Okay, so 28th, and if everybody's happy for training, on uh, 28th of September. <laughs> yeah, we can watch their meeting. Um, okay, I'm just... Uh, just make sure I'm actually okay as well. Yeah. Tuesday 28th, then. We don't need to vote on that, but... Right, so I've got that then. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda requires us to move to exclude the press and public from the uh, the building. Um, and obviously, um, I'm going to move that uh, because the item's exempt um, under the Local Government Act. Uh, the next item, so uh, I've moved it against the Chesworth seconding it. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. Yep, right. Uh, We'll exclude press and public then. Um, obviously, we'll just pause for now for for Jody to uh, to uh, pause. The, well, close the <laughs> recording of the meeting. So, uh, thank you for those watching, and good night to you.